a game showed break. Study functional programming in this lecture course. So I hope you have studied my last seven lectures, studied my last seven lectures very well. And now show and come the fundamentals of functional programming. This lecture onwards, I will do two advanced topics where you understand the advantage of functional program. So we start our discussion on the concept what we call it as call it as map predicates. So you know in the functional programming and other programming languages. There is a concept for loops. If you want to do some actions again and again, we are using loops. So in the Scala functional programming language, in case you want to go to a list, to add, to add the numbers in that list, or to filter the numbers in that list, you can use a loop. So, Functional programming language has another operator for that full iterator. You can create an iterator using the list. And this iterator function has a function called hasNet. If there is an element in the list or whatever array or whatever data structure, so you create an iterator on top of this data structure and call a method called has next, it returns basically a element, next element in the list. So using a while loop as shown here, so you can get all elements one by one and then you can process this. So iterator is a traditional way of handling it. So in the iterator, what we do, we take each element in that particular data structure, for example, list, and do some operation to each element in this list. So perhaps we can write a function to do that. So if you write a function and take what you want to do as a parameter, so you don't need to write a while loop. So in functional programming concepts, so there is a function for so that's map. So map function, definition of map function is actually to apply a function to the every element. So let's say we write a function called apply a function to every element and take a parameter Parameter is perhaps a function. So we apply this function to each element on our list, for example. So that basically we call it as a map. So in the map function, can apply to the data structures like list, arrays, and so on. So it creates a new list when you apply into the list. It creates a new list by applying the given function to the each element. So it's visually something like that. We have a function f. There is a list of elements. So we apply this function f to each element in this list. That will create a new list. So map do that. Map take input function and apply that input function to the elements in the data structure that is list and return a new data structure with new elements. In order to understand how it works, so let's create a function to pass into a list. In a function programming, we can create what we call it, call it as functional literals. So functional literals are an anonymous function, or what we call it as lambda functions. 
So it also called as function literals. So for example, this is some functional literal. This says, take each element x, transform to x multiplied 2. So that it, this function literal means. Every element will multiply by 2. So this is x multiply 2. So x is a function we apply. What it does is transform every element into a multiplying it by 2. So this call it as functional literal. So sx is a list. So we can apply our new function, interesting function called map to this x list. So what we input is this function. What is this function? S transform into a smart by two. So then what happened? Let's try to understand what happened after that. So for example, let's say we have a list of numbers. So we want to multiply every element by two. So non-functional methods of doing it, something like that. We create a function and we get a list and using a for while loop, here for example, for loop, we access every element in the list, multiply it by two and put it back to a list and return a new list. <laughs> So this everything what we do here can do with the single function for bench. So there are what we do, we create a functional literal. So this functional literal tells the system x transform to x multiply two. And this is called as x. This is anonymous function. So we can pass that anonymous function x to the map. Or we can directly write something like that. We say whatever our data here, map into f underscore means every element multiply two. So we say every element multiply two or pass that functional literal x to there. So then map function access every element and transfer or transform it to other value we want. So it creates a new set of lists. Now let's have a look on filter. What that filter do? As it names, filter will filter out elements in the list. So let's say we have a list and they are we have a set of numbers. From that numbers, assume we want to get odd numbers. So we can call function filter for that. So how filter works? Filter function can apply to any list or similar kind of data structure. So we call the filter with functional literal f4. So this is my f4. F4 says x transfer to x mod 2 equals 0. x mod 2 equals 0 means actually this is true if the element is even number. Right? So we, we pass this condition for what we call it as anonymous function or functional literal f4 to the filter function. So then what that filter function do, it take the function input f4 and apply this f4 to every element in this list. So when, we, when it applies f4 to every element, and then if that returns true, so that element will be selected. 
So as a result, so when you say L1 filter F4, it returns a list L2, which only has even numbers. So like that, we can pass any function to the filter. So filter function, filter out the elements based on this condition. So that is filter. So in functional programming, there is any uh, there is a other very interesting function available that is called reduce. Reduce can also apply to any list, array, whatever similar data structure. So if the reduce will reduce the data based on the given function. So it's a little different than list and the uh, map and the filter because when you apply the map you return a function sorry list new list we apply the filter it also returns a new list but when you apply the radius it returns most of the time a value for example let's say we want to add all the numbers in the list traditional way of doing it try to follow take a, every element add to a some variable and accumulate it in each iteration. So we can do the same with the list as we can do the same with the radius, sorry, with the radius. What do we do? We have a list here, you see, we call the radius method and we tell how to reduce and we pass how to reduce as a parameter to the reduce function. So here we pass a function literal again to the reduce function. So here what we do, we say take x and y, transform into x plus y. So that it says, here it says, pick two elements in the list x and y and transform that to x plus y. So what happens if you ask to do so? So reduce works like that. So reduce first takes first element as A, and then kind of apply A plus B. So it's initial element is C, kind of first element in the list is kind of actually it's zero, not A, not five, A. Then second is B, that is five. A plus B is kind of five. So it applies five, we take five. Then you take the five as X and take the second element two as Y and apply the function F to that. So F phi two, X is five, Y is two. Then it transform to X plus five, that is seven. So it get answer seven. So then it take x seven as x, and the next element in the list as the y that is nine, and apply the function f to seven and nine. Function is x plus y. So then f x plus y is sixteen. So sixteen will take it as next to next function a. And four is taken as next element taken as take it as y, and then apply the function f, then it becomes twenty. So it's kind of binary, adding each element again and again until every element is all the elements added to it. So its final answer is the sum of every element. Similarly, if you want to multiply every element in this function, so we can write the reduce function, reduce, and pass x plus y transform to x multiplied by. So you see, it's very simple. We don't need to write for loops to do so. Similarly, if you want to get a maximum element in this, in the list, so you can, write a function something like that. We say pass x and y and return max x max y. 
So then binary, this is applied to every element. So in the zero and the first element. So among them, it will join a maximum. So then with that maximum element and the next element, then in, among that it will select the maximum and it goes on. So it's finally, you see, it's returned the maximum element in the list. Similarly, if you want to get a minimum element in the list, so you can call reduce function with this x y transform to x min x mini y function. So you see, it's simple. So you see, so in the functional programming has very interesting function, set of functions, call it as map, filter, and reduce. Most of the data science programming applications, they have to use map reduce. So this map reduce is a very interesting abstraction where we can use for process huge data sets. So in the big data, and analyzing of the big data. So we heavily use MapReduce concepts. So again, I remind you what is Map. Map is applying a function to every element in the list. What is Reduce? Reduce is actually apply a function and reduce the list, kind of like add, multiply your kind of select binary through kind of through a binary search through the list by taking every element at a time. Assume there are two function literal here, for example. This is a anonymous function for list zero. So we take an input i and return i mod 2 equal 0. That is, if we pass an integer here, it returns true when that integer is even number, otherwise it returns false. So that's this anonymous function do. So then here we have anonymous, or what you call it, what you call it as lambda function. We take integer n and it multiply integer i and Multiply i by 2. This is i multiply 2. So then assume there is a list on the top which has four elements 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can apply filter function to this particular list by calling ints filter with this is even function. So then what happened? This is even function, this lambda function will apply to every element in this list. So then when you apply a same function, this might become false, this is true, this is false, this is true. So as a result, hence a filter is even will return a list which has two elements, that is two and four. Similarly, we can apply map function to this list so map function take a input function that is double. Double will multiply each value by two. So then what's happened? So when you call map on top of this list, so double function will apply to each element that double the element in the list. That means we, we get a new list which has two, four, six, and eight. So that's how map and filter works. Similar to reduce, in functional programming languages has other interesting function called fold. Fold is similar to the reduce, but with the fold we can give an initial value. So when I discuss this, uh, taking addition of each uh, elements in the list, I say the first take is zero and then add zero to the first element and then take the result. Result will add to the second element and then 
that resulted as the third element and so on. That's how radius works. So initial value in the radius usually kind of is a zero, empty element. So you, with the hold, we can give initial value to a function if you want. So it's a hold works like that. When you apply the hold, there is an initial value we pass to this function that is zero. And then we apply the function x, y, transform to x plus y. So then this value passes here, take it as initial value. So then what's happened? So this initial value and the element apply to the function to create a next one. So then we take an element, apply to this function, take the next element. So next element we take here, and apply the next result we'll take here and apply the next element and create the next result and so on. It's almost similar to a radius, but with the fold, we could have initial value. So this is, let's say there is a list called L. So we can say L map XY transform to X plus Y. So same thing we can do with L for flow fold an initial value x plus y transform to x y transform to x plus y. Same thing we can do with flow. Right. In order to understand how this map produce filter and folds works, so we will take several examples and explain how we do it in the functional way. So I'll demonstrate those in a separate video in the lecture I just discussed. So assume I want to find the prime numbers in my first example. In a functional way, I want to find the prime numbers. How do I find the prime numbers? So usual method to find the prime number is divide the number from two to a square root of a kind of given number and take the number module mod two, then number mod three, number mod four, like that, up to the square root of your number. And see whether any of that will map, any of that is equal to zero. So for example, a given number mod two is zero that means it is not a prime number because there is a fact. So for example, so in order to find the prime numbers in function we might need several functions. So maybe I write a function called is prime. This is a lambda function which take Uh, any integer, so n. So we want to check whether that given n is a prime or not. So we say then this n is transformed to this function. What that function mean? So that function in the first I say two to math square root of this given number n. So when I say two to this upper limit, so this particular statement will create a list of numbers from two to that upper one by one. So each of these numbers, I then say, apply a function filter. So it generate a list. So to each of these elements which in this list created with this statement, I apply a function filter. So that function filter take a function literal so that is n mod underscore means every element, one by one. So I apply a given number n mod to the this number list starting from two and see whether that is equal to zero. Right? 
So that will filter out. Or oh, if it is kind of tells us all the all the factors or all the factors of that given number n. Right? So then how do you find that number is a prime? So if you apply this and if you filter it, so if there are no numbers or nothing in that list, that means this n, n is a prime. So what we do after we filter it out using this function, we apply another function called size that returns the size of this list and we, we check whether it is zero. So you see how I build the logic. So I'll go from the beginning so what I want to write a lambda function called is prime that determine given number n is a prime or not. For that, what I do first, I generate a number, a list of numbers from two to the square root of the given number where I want to check whether it is a prime. So how do I do that? I say the system, take a n and then transform two to the next square root of n. To it. That means if I given 25, it will generate a list of numbers 2 to 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. Let's create a list. Then I want to check whether any of these elements in the list is a factor of the given number. For that, I take a given number a and mod underscore every element in this list and check whether it is zero. So if it is zero, I will pick that number, two or three or four, whatever. So then we know that number is a fact of the given number. Then in third, I take the size of those filtered list. So size of those filter list is zero. That means the given number do not have, a given number does not have any factors. So that means it is a prime number. So that's my logic. So I create a list of numbers, take each number, and divide it, mod it, take modular of this uh, with the given number to find it out the factors of that given number and see whether such factors is exist. If there are no such factors, the given number is a prime number. So how do I convert that logic into a function? So this is like that. This will create a list of numbers. We take the more factors from that filter, and then I call the size function and check whether it is equal to zero. So that tells you the given number is a prime number or not. So if it is a prime number, size is zero, it returns true. If it is not prime number, factor list is more than zero. So then definitely if there is a factor, this is not a prime number. So that's how we should think in a functional way. Okay, in order to understand further, I'll take more example before that. Let's say I want to generate a list of random numbers. How do I do? So in this previous example here, I generate a list of numbers starting from that to this. Similarly, if I want, I can create a list of random numbers. List of random list. A number list. Random number list. For that, Scala has a 
function called random. Go there, I can call next int method. So it returns a random number. So I write a function, lambda function called R1, which take x as input and transform to scalar unit random next zero with x. That returns me a random number which is less than x. So that's how I can create a single random number which is less than a value x. So I want to create an array or list of random numbers. I can do it directly like that. I create a value L, this is a list, L1. So I call a function, a list fill. So in case I want 10 numbers, I say 10 and then I pass it the function to create that random numbers. The, that function is R1. R1 take one parameter, so that is the maximum value ID. So when I call this, it returns a list of random numbers which is less than 1000. So you see here we have curry. So we call fill function and apply that. It return a function. We apply that. It, it return another function inside there is another function. So this is R1 is a function which generate random numbers, which take one parameter that is maximum value. And we pass R1 to the fill function and then take. 10 numbers filled. Okay, so you, by doing that, I can create a random number list or list of random numbers. So, list of random numbers. Right. Assume after we have number list, random number list, or whatever number list, we want to take a total and average of those numbers. How can I do it with functional way? So if, I, if we want to do it in a functional way, we can directly apply reduce function. So, so here I write a lambda function called sum, which take the input list. So when you take the input list to this lambda function sum, we return, return sum of the numbers in this given list. So then, what that function do? So this transform to L dot reduce. So I create a reduce function on top of this list L. So this reduce function take input parameter or input, fun input function. So input function is x, y transform to x plus y. So that each L at each element one after other. So as a result, it reduces to addition of the all numbers in this list. So if you want to take the average, so let's say you want to pass that list and create a lambda function called stat, it retains, it returns the sum and the average of the given list. So how can we do that? So I wrote a sum function here, sum lambda function. So then I can write a stat function here, which take the list transform to the sum and the average. So that's what I want. I want a tuple with two elements. First element is the sum, second element is the average. That is assigned to this function. So what is I say take a list L and try, take a sum of L, so sum function I given here, and then the second element is sum transform to double and divide with the size of that list. So if I know the sum and the number of element in the list, in order to get the average, I divide sum with the size. So that's what I do here. So as a result of this function definition, I might get back sum and the average of 
the given number in this given list. I can do it in another way as well. So in this, so you see I generate a list of tuples. Then I pass a list to this function t. It creates a list of tuples using map method. So in the map method, what it do, it take every element, transform to element plus one. So as a result, it creates a list of tuples. The list of tuples has every element and one, every el second element one, third element one, like that. So then, when you want to, take the sum, what should it do? So after it maps to like that, I can call directory radius. So in the radius, first elements, I say first tuple add to the second tuple, then sec result tuple will add to the third tuple. First element on the third tube, like that. So it's a x dot underscore one accessing the first element in the tube. Right? So it add to the second element. So as a result here, we will get the addition of each element. So as a result here, it get the how many elements because we transfer every element to one so we add all ones together we get sum of number of we get number of elements when you add these elements together we get total so that takes the sum that take how many elements so then if you want average what we should do we divide, transform the second to the double, and we divide with the first. First one has total numbers, the second one has how many numbers? The so total of numbers divided by how many numbers will return the average. So this is the other way of taking sum and the average of the given list. As I told you at the beginning, so this functional programming concept, especially MapReduce, they will apply to process data in huge files. Because we can write it in our problem, we can divide into small functions. So later on we will learn those functions, we can add, uh, do it parallel. So we can efficiently process the data. So how to do it in parallel, we will learn later on. So here we study how to take simple data processing tasks, how to write simple data processing tasks using functions. Right, so, so far we discussed about integer list or double list and take average, sum, and so on. So maybe if you want to process some data in a text file, so, simple thing you want to do, perhaps you first of all, you want to count number of words in a huge text file. So how do you do that in a functional way? So you have a huge file, text file, and you want to count, you want to write a program to count number of letter, words in that file. How do you do in a functional method? It's very simple. What you should do, first of all, you have to create the file. So in the Scala, there is a function called form file and give a name of the file you want to read. Then it will create a file to read that file. So you say Scala, IO, source, 
from file and give a text file name with the full path. So it creates a reference of the, to the given file, given file for sample TST and assign that to the value source. So using this, we can call get lines. It returns all the lines in this given file. Actually, it not return all the lines into the memory. It creates a reference for a source. That source refers to every lines in this given file for sample TST. So that's how we can read lines in the file. When you call that, it actually not load an entire file into the memory, but we can access every line using this valid source. All right. What I am now going to do is count the number of words. So as in order to do that, first I would like to do, so I would like to write a function for words where it take a string as input, line as input, which converts into a words. So what it takes lines, transform into the line word split using the space. So when it given a line that is a string to this function called Pathman, that transform that by dividing using a space. So as a result of source flat map line transform, the line dot split this will return words in that given file. The source refers to this, you see source refers to the every line in the file. So we take every line and apply the map function. We call it as flat map function. It creates transform the lines to the words. So as a result, we get a list of words. Now we need to count how many words in this list called words. In order to count them, what I do, I map every word in that list, word list, into the tuple list. So first element of the tuple is the word, second element of that tuple is one. So as a result of words map, x transform to x one, all create a list of tuples as each word and one. So then if I want to find it out how many words, I add the second element of all tuples. So using radius one. So there what I do, so there is a tuple list in radius two, take x and y, transform. In the first element, I don't want to do anything. In the second element, dot underscore two refers to the second element in the tuple, that is one. I add all ones in the list of tuples using this. So as a result, I get how many words in this list. So that is created out of this. It then returns, actually what it returns finally using this goal is how many words in this file. So my algorithm behind that is first read the file line by line divide those lines, all lines, using space character into the list of words, and map this list of words, each word with one. We map that to the tuples. It, it, this tuple has each word and one. And then I add the ones together. 
find the word count. So you see how do you think about functions. So I can hide those all steps which I divide into several sub steps together like that in a one single function. So here I have a lambda function called BC, WC, that is called word count. So that word count lambda function take a string, transform. String is the file name of the file which I want to count the words. So that string passes to the from file function and get lines out of that. So all lines transform to the fat map. Then it maps into the X tuple, tuple map, a tuple list. And from that tuple list, this tuple is reduced into this. So like that, I can write one single line which do everything. So then after I call WC and find name, it immediately returns to how many words in that human file. So that's how easy to be used function programming. So maybe it's a little difficult to understand how we, write, how we should write it. But if you understand the way it works, Writing codes are just few lines. So, in the traditional way of programming, where we want to write 100 codes, we can write it with one single line map in functional program. So, I hope, I wish you understand that now. Okay, assume that now, let's take another example to, add, to understand the strength of functional program. Let's say we want to find the number of letters or we want to count the letters. So how do I do? So there what I do, I have a character so I want to find it out. How many of such characters in this given string is? So I can write it straightforward like that. I say take x and I say x string dot count each element underscore me each element in that string s equal to x. So that means as a result of that it returns the count of the words, uh, letters. So if I want to then count the letters in a given file, first of all, I read the file and get lines and transform all lines into a single string using make string function. So as a result, when someone passed the sample txt, it returns me a huge string, which has all the lines. So I can then count the distinguished characters straightforward like that. I say source this thing to character array and I map it using this function fc. So this map function applies the function fc here which I define to each character in this like this. But that function fc is take uh, one character and a string. So I put underscore in each character then. I pass each character and the string source to the function fc and see whether this each character appears how many times in this. It returns the distinguished character, count of distinguished characters. So all the things which I discuss in several lines can write 
it has a one single function like that. Obviously, it look complicated, but if you understand each thing, what it happens each at each functions, it actually very simple. So I will demonstrate those things so you may understand properly how it works. So now let's have a look how to count the given words in a given file. So here I read a file, example txt again, and make a one single string out of that called source. And then I break into the distinct, distinct, distinct word list. How do I do that? I pass that source string to here and I split it, call it as text, and this text will be split using space and map that into this. So actually I map, when I'm mapping it, I map all the words in lowercase. Then I filter a given word out of that. So how do I do that? From the string s, array s, whatever as s, array, I'm passing an array of strings. And the string I want to check called p. And I apply x function transform x equal p. That means I pick all the words in this list if that is equal to the given word. Then if I want to take a number of that how many times it appears, I can take the size of this list here that tells me the appearance of the word, number of appearance of the given words in this sample file. Similarly, I can write entire word counting function in a single line like that, count, but test, you want test in this string, in this huge string. So that is transform this, actually this is test, you want test. I want to count this S, how many times appear in text. So I split this text and create a list of words in lowercase. And from that list, I filter the cases where every element equal to the S and then take the size of that. So it tells me how many words in that list. So everything which we discuss, we can write like that. Anyway, I will show you all those as a demonstration. So there you may understand the proper. Okay, so my last example. So let's implement a Caesar cipher using functional programming. So Caesar ciphers convert a string to another string. So that usually call it as encryption. So for that, I pick alphabet for the encryption. That is the character from A to A to Z. And then here I wrote a, my encryption function. Encryption function take each character and shift key number of positions. Key is how many times I want to shift from to this alphabet, right? So I give a character, key, and alphabet to this function need. So then this function need transform that into a different character. So according to this function, it's what's happened. Check the index of whatever is given character and apply the key and take a mod A size, that is mod 26 usually, and then pick the character in this portion. It's usually get the, if this is key is three, get the third letter in that, key is five, get the fifth letter. Shift the 
a one letter in, in the fifth position. So that is my encryption function. Similarly, my, I can write my decryption function in this expansion. So instead of, instead of plus here, decryption is minus. So this encryption and decryption algorithm. So then you see, based on this encryption and decryption algorithms, I can create a cipher function. So my cipher function, check algorithm, transform to this. So what happens in this, take each character on the string S and map based on the given algorithm. This is algo. I pass the algo to the map function. So map function will apply this algorithm to the every character in this string. So that's how I enter. So use, I can call the cipher function with encryption and the string is now many characters and alphabet, it encrypt, it returns me the different string that is the cipher. Similarly, I can call my cipher function now here with decryption algorithm and given the cipher text, instead of here plain text, here cipher text, with the key and give the alphabet, that's in return, so plain text back. So like that, we can implement encryption and decryption of the CSS cycle straightforward in a simple way using functional program or using a functional method. So you see, if you want to solve problems using functional programming languages, we have to think decurrently and we need to divide our problem into small functions, then we could put these functions together to solve our problem. So that's all about functional program. So in this lesson, what we would we try to understand is the strength of map filter relatives and its applications. Thank you very much for listening so far. I will create a separate video to demonstrate these examples. Thank you.